Uh, so, so my uh, my message to Ottawa would be, uh, you know, we we have problems here in this city. They're not being fixed. Uh, if you bring people here uh, who have never contributed to our country, uh, who are actually costing our country lots of money, uh, and uh, the main problems themselves of the of the city are not being solved. We're not solving Windsor's problems by bringing in people from other countries. Uh, and having the federal government pay for them. If there's money for these people, why isn't there money for uh, the problems here in Windsor, some of which uh, could be fixed if there's enough cash uh, from, uh, from Mr. Trudeau and company. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Windsor, Ontario. And folks, I'm standing outside the Best Western Hotel here in Windsor. This is one of three Windsor properties that are housing hundreds of illegal aliens, most of whom have come across the border to Canada via the infamous Roxham Road illegal border crossing, the one that spans Quebec and New York State. Now, this is a story that plays out in several Canadian cities. Niagara Falls, even now, during the height of tourism season, Cornwall, Ottawa, Toronto, there are just so many. And the reason why we're here is to find out um, what is going to be the end goal? Now, as we understand it, according to mainstream media reports, there is about 900 migrant claimants staying in Windsor. That's down from about 1,400 uh, in the wintertime. But still, it looks like the deadline for housing these migrants, it has been extended. It was supposed to end sometime in the summertime. Now it's being dragged out until the fall and perhaps even beyond. Hey there, how are you doing? Good, Good. I was just wondering, how much is a, uh, a room here, please? I'm so sorry, we're sold out. Oh, you're sold yeah, out? but if you walk up the front doors and walk through the uh, double C, they have rooms available. Oh, okay then. Um, so just at the front doors and to the left. How long are you sold out until? Um, October. <laughs> October? Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, why are you so packed? Oh, we just have a government group in-house. A, a government group in-house? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Whoa. Which government? <laughs> we have refugees in house. Oh, it's the refugees. Yeah. This is... Oh, okay. Gotcha. And the big question, folks, is how much of our tax dollars are going towards these programs? We cannot get that figure out of the federal government. In fact, they won't even respond to our media calls. In addition to the rooms, there is a daily allowance uh, for the migrants. Um, there are other perks and benefits. And um, meantime, in the department of beggars can't be choosers, well, we might have to update that old metaphor because it apparently some of the claimants, I'm not saying all, well, they're not very gracious. For example, I recently spoke off camera with a merchant in downtown Windsor. He did not want to get on camera. He, well, that's the kind of cancel culture society we live in, don't we? But he deals a lot with the hotel employees and they have told him so many stories that are, I think, downright incredible. For example, um, there's been many complaints about um, the hotel beds, the food being served at the hotel. On one occasion, a food service manager of the property was told that Afghanis were coming into the hotel, so they had to make allowances for halal meals, meaning that the meat they had already bought was no longer suitable. Uh, he tells me of someone who was staying at one of these hotels, a migrant claimant, who actually robbed somebody and the punishment wasn't uh, immediate deportation. No, he was shifted to another migrant hotel. In fact, by the sounds of things, he might even gotten a room upgrade. So, um, and, and, and finally, he knows of someone uh, from Iraq and um, he felt as though he had won the lottery. What he said to him was, quote, um, what a country, I'm getting thousands of dollars, that's for resettlement, and a chauffeur, end quote. Yeah, what a country indeed. So 
We're going to try to get some answers, see if anybody will come on and speak to us. And in the meantime, I'll see if there are any passers-by here in Windsor. And I do have someone dropping by. His name is Chris Soda. I've interviewed him earlier. He ran for council here in the city of Windsor. I think he might have a few things to say too. Keep it here. Well, lo and behold, folks, um, this individual, his name is Bob, was walking by. He recognized me and I recognized the t-shirt he was wearing. It's Rebel News merchandise. Um, so I thought this would be a friendly interview indeed and I think I'm gonna be proven right. Let's talk to Bob and, feels, and see what he has to say about the situation. Okay, so Bob, as I mentioned, uh, you are a resident of the city of Windsor. Um, there's something like, um, I think it's more than 600 uh, refugee claimants uh, in the city. They're going to be here, it looks like, until at least fall. Um, what do you know? What have you heard? Well, like, uh, it was, in fact, in the Windsor Star today, they had an article about the refugees are staying here, and apparently there's about 800 left, and they're going to be here till probably till Christmas. It's supposed to be October now, but it's they've extended it twice already. They've been here since January. And I just, uh, the lack of transparency bothers me. Like, how much money of our taxpayers' dollars are going to these people. Uh, what's the end game? Are, are any of them working? Do they speak the language yet? Um, it, it's it's a lack of transparency. And and people talk about immigration. I'm for immigration. In fact, we need immigration. We need we need all kinds of tradespeople here. But th this is not the type of immigration that. Uh, that I had in mind. You know, Trudeau's immigration is different. The, the big question, as always, the bottom line is the bottom line. And how many millions and millions of dollars is this costing us, Bob? And, and what I can't help but notice is our mixed priorities. We have Canadian Armed Forces personnel in Latvia being told to buy their own kits, buy their own ammo. And suddenly we have oodles of cash for people who aren't even citizens? Yeah, you're right. Um, the money's just not being spent properly. And and when they come in, it creates other problems. We already have a major housing problem. Our healthcare system's deteriorating. It's it, it's garbage. It's, it's absolute garbage. It's, uh, you know, and so it's creating all these other problems in our schools. We have to educate these people who are coming across. Like, it's more so in the states, but it's happening over here too. So you have to hire teachers. It's just creating more and more problems, and we can't afford this right now. It's both dangerous, it's unaffordable, and it's really um, our country's suffering from it. It's a tough time right now in Canada. Uh, have a small moment of your time when you're finished with your phone call. Uh, no. no. Just right now. Yeah. Oh, I, I can wait. So I, I'm David Menzies with Rebel News. I'm just doing a story about the refugee hotels. No. Thanks. Thanks, no? Aren't you the council? I'm just doing a story about the refugee hotels. No. Aren't you the counselor for? Uh, all right. Well, folks, there you have it. I tried to get Fabio Constante. He's a city councilor here uh, for the city of Windsor. Uh, once again, uh, somebody that made me feel like the proverbial skunk to the garden party. Um, I really would like to know where he weighs in uh, for his constituents on this issue. I understand he's with the public health unit here and uh, he's also about safe injection sites. So I think um, when it comes to the file, there goes the neighborhood. Uh, this councillor is all in. And what do you know, like Batman, he just disappeared. If you were elected councillor, and I, I don't know how much sway a municipal politician has over the federal government, but what message would you be sending to the Justin Trudeau Liberals in terms of filling up so many of your hotels with these uh, refugee claimants? Okay, so first, uh, you know, Windsor's uh, had its struggles uh, over the last uh, few years. Uh, we're trying to turn the corner here. Uh, and uh, one of the issues that still remains is, uh, is housing. Uh, a lot of Windsorites are having trouble uh, finding affordable housing. Uh, so it seems uh, a bit contradictory to be a, a representative of the people uh, of the city and to allow people from outside the country to come here, stay in motels, um, uh, and uh, have all the uh, luxuries and uh, perks that go with this. 
while a lot of other people are struggling just to uh, make ends meet, pay their grocery bills, uh, working from paycheck to paycheck and so forth, it seems a little bit uh, of an insult. Uh, so so my, uh, my message to Ottawa would be, uh, you know, we, we have problems here in this city. They're not being fixed. Uh, if you bring people here uh, who have never contributed to our country, uh, who are actually costing our country lots of money, uh, and uh, the main problems themselves of the, of the city are not being solved. We're not solving Windsor's problems by bringing in people from other countries uh, and having the federal government pay for them. If there's money for these people, why isn't there money for uh, the problems here in Windsor, some of which uh, could be fixed if there's enough cash uh, from, uh, from Mr. Trudeau and company? Hey folks, I know you love it when Rebel News tells you the other side of the story, but we really do need your help. We don't get government handouts, nor would we accept them if offered. So please go to rebelfieldreports.com. That's rebelfieldreports.com. And if you can make a donation, no matter how small, that would greatly be appreciated.